Hey everyone, I'm Ultima456, you're the Ultimates, and welcome to episode 16 of Last Platinum Neo. Alright, let's do some blacksmithing today. I'm gonna try and get a lot of this done. So let's go into Forge. So we handed over our smithing texts. I think we handed over quite a few, so these were always here. I think the Heshikiri Hasabe we handed over. Um, perhaps the... what else? Anything else? No, all of these I think are regular. Yeah, so just the Heshikiri Has Hasobe, and then this one we handed over the leg Legendary Strategist's Garb, and the Raging Bull, um, anything else? No, I'm pretty sure that's it, that's all we handed over. Alright, so you can see that, like, we can't make all of this, um, we can some of it, but not all of it. Um, what we're gonna do first is, I had, like, an idea to sort of try and sell all my gear, but I decided against it, and I said, and we're gonna do a little bit of disassembling and also a bit of selling, um, uh, but maybe the selling will wait for a little bit longer. Um, so this is kind of how I like to do it. First I sort everything by rarity, and really there's no reason to do this, but I'll just show you. Sort everything by rarity, you can tell that the minimum rarity is white, followed by yellow, then blue, and then, uh, purple, right? So, I don't really want to use any white, or definitely don't want to use any white items, and I really don't want to use any yellow items. So, I sort them into rarity, and then I press the sub function button, which is on the touchpad, and I check everything that's uncommon, yellow, or below. That will check all of this, right? And then I just immediately, without even looking, I don't really care about like looking at what they have, press X, and I disassemble everything. 60 uncommon items and 39 common items. It will say that I've reached maximum familiarity with some of them. You can technically offer these uh, in the uh, to the shrine people um, so that you can get more Amrita. But the Amrita that you get is so minimal, it's not really worth doing it. So don't worry, just press yes on that one. Um, we're going to do pretty much exactly the same thing on all of our uh, like headpiece gears and all that kind of stuff as well. I'm just going to see if this actually works and stays a hold of it. Oh no, my PS4 is going crazy. Um, that one, that one, and that one, that should be everything, nice, so let's disassemble, perfect, that's 153 items just gone. Now the next, next thing I like to do is I like to put them in order of level, so press R3 a couple times until they're sorted by level. And then basically I just get rid of everything that's a little bit too low for us right now, so maybe something, anything under 15 I'd say. So let's just go to the bottom and we'll work our way up. So all this, just press triangle on each one. Anything up to level 15, including the exotics, don't worry. Bizanichi Manji. Yeah, let's go up to there. Disassemble those. Same with this, so everything should be on sort by level. Don't worry about what it says, just like pick a level and leave it at that. I could even push it to like level 20, but let's let's start with level 15. Because what you want to do is like obviously looking at every single piece of gear and trying to determine, you know, what to keep, what to get rid of and all that. That's, it's too much, so you have to kind of like reduce it. And I find that you, if you just pick kind of like a, a roundabout level, um, like something around your level, you can kind of get rid of the majority of it and then you can have a bit more of a cleaner look at what you're trying to hold on to. See, now we're we're far less. So how many are we on? 123 out of 500. So already there, we've like knocked out 300 items, which is really good. Um, now for the weapons, uh, let's see. So what are we, uh, we've still got the, uh, yeah, we've still got Ikoku. So the Ikoku is kind of the main weapon that we want to keep. So we can also lock these weapons by pressing square. So let's lock all the ones that we want to keep. The Heshikiri. Uh, let's keep this Namio Yogi that we just got, because that's really good. Warrior of the West Bow is probably good to keep. The Senjun Tachi is good to keep. Uh, the Raikiri. The Minoden. Is there anything better than the Minoden? We're uh, sorted by level, so currently no, there's nothing better than the Minoden. Uh, and then pretty much you can like look at everything else and go, yep, there's no reason to keep anything else. Uh, the only thing that we want to get changed is the Longbow. The Longbow that we have is very low level. So we want to use at least this blue one here. Um, but I cannot equip it currently. So what I might do is I might actually... What, have I picked stuff? No. So I'll select everything that's left except for the longbow. 
And I'm just gonna get rid of everything there. Beautiful. Same thing here. We're gonna look at... Um, well, we have the Scout Armor Mengu equipped, so if we press... Uh, I can't compare on this screen. Okay. Let's leave this for now. Go back here. Equip our Longbow. Also, we've got the Warrior of the West Bow, so we can actually equip that. Um, yeah, and then we put the Warrior of the West Bow. Wait. That one. Longbow there. And then we can, now we're going to sort of go through the items and see what we can use. Alright, so this is another thing I didn't explain, um, and I meant to. This is the Legendary Strategist's uh, Garb Helm Headpiece, right? The Zookin. Um, you'll notice at the bottom it has, uh, it need, you need 11 body and 12 skill to, to use it. Uh, or to at least gain its uh, affixes, right? If you create a piece of gear, uh, like if you create this piece of gear with um, Tome in the blacksmith, the requirements will be halved. You only require like, I guess, six or five body and six or f six skill. Um, so that's important to remember. Um, let's compare some of these items and see if we can get anything good. So the Warrior of the West, you get a 30% um, skill damage bonus to Tiger Sprint, but I don't use Tiger Sprint, so it's not really that helpful to me. Um, this piece of gear though is a lot better than my Scout Armor Mengu. Um, but I'm gonna try and find something like equivalent that's close. Maybe this one here, because it gives life. Let's put that one on, because I think it's better. And then, do we have anything better than that? Um, this is okay. No, I'll keep that one. I'll, get, I'll keep with the Scout Armor Mengu, get rid of the rest. Alright, the Shinobi Apparel, anything better than this? Why did that have 83? Oh, because it's very heavy. This one's 89, this one's pretty good. Not too much heavier. Life. Toughness, this has a lot of key on it. Maybe this one. So I'll use the Warrior of the West Doe. I think that's better. What, what other uh, damage reduction? Okay, so you still get a damage reduction. Apparently I already have two pieces on, which is really good. Um, yeah, this is pretty good actually. Power from the barehanded damage, this is pretty good. So I might actually equip this and I'll try and reforge that barehanded damage into something else. We don't have to go like min-maxing right now, but we can actually get something like decent. Um, that's pretty good. And we're still under the weight range. We're not close to being in the A rank, uh, weight range this time, but Still in a better place. Let's put that one on the Warlord armor. Even that one's all right. Okay, and then finally, you can see a lot of the pieces that we've been wearing are quite old now, so definitely want an upgrade. We can have four pieces of this: close combat damage increased and the Riken damage increase. All right, let's put that on. May as well. We're going to increase our damage considerably. And what did we have on before? Defense. Yeah, I might try and reforge some of those abilities to like defense and toughness or something like that. Alright, cool. So we've picked all the best stuff. So we have everything that we want. So we'll go back to the blacksmith. I realize this is taking a little bit of time, but I think it's important to um to go through how to like manage your inventory. Let's get rid of this real quick. And then we want to get rid of basically everything, 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 everything. Cool, and disassemble, yep. That way we have 70 items, beautiful. Uh, all right, reforge, armor. So I'm not too concerned about anything there. That's all fine. Barehanded damage, now we wanna get rid of this because we don't use our bare hands, so let's just do it. And rid of earn from people. Hmm, nah. Nope. I just want something that we can use. Versus water, something better. Okay, we'll use that. That's good. Equipment drop rate, it's fine. Uh, this is fine. This one, I want. I'll get rid of these two. It'll cost a bit more. But perhaps I'll get something better. Running speed is okay. Fine. Evasion key usage. There we go. So now we've got some decent pieces. 20, all above the level 20. Weapon? Uh, I don't think. 
Wait, we can't change it because... Oh, we can't even change it if it's locked. Did not know that. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I like everything there. That's fine. That's fine too. I don't know if we're going to be using this too much longer, but let's just do this. There we go. Fine. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, so like I said, we don't need to um, go absolutely insane with trying to min-max everything, but, you know, doing a few things might help. And then finally, the last thing we want to do, and this is how I kind of make at least a little bit of a, a bit more money, we compare our... So, wow, I, I still have that level 1 Omomori charm. <laughs> um, so let's compare Omomori charm to something else. Um, uh, Magatama... Life, water shot, we don't need that. Do we have another medicine case? Uh, yeah, we do. What about another Omomori charm? Oh, wait, let's put them into a rarity. Or is... hang on. Yeah, this is good. So we'll use this para Paralysis Omomori charm. This was actually the one that we got in um, the second mission. Um, you open up that chest just before Hino Enma. Um, so we got that there. And then accessory two... Um, yeah, let's go for that. Getting a bit of defense there. Anything here? Emerita Emerid Gorge Edition is pretty good. It's hard, it's really hard to choose what you want, but I'm just kind of going off my best guess, basically. If you really, really want to, like, read into it and try and figure out, you know, well, basically, you just have to read into it and find out what, what's best for your playstyle. And once you've done that, just go to the... Accessories tab, select all, sell. 3,360, not much, but something. And we want to also check if she has any good special finds. Oh, that's good, it has lightning damage on it. Uh, nah, that's fine, nothing else. Okay, let's leave well enough alone. Alright, cool, so we're pretty much done with that. We're going to do this mission next, a request from Jintio, and then I think one more mission will open up and we can proceed to the next region after that. Uh, but we might actually go back to the Isle of Demons, see if we can beat on Ryoki without taking any hits. But we'll see. Um, but for right now, I'm going to leave it here for a second, so I will be back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm trying to decide what to do, and uh, I thought I might show you some of the yokai il illustrations, because there's interesting stuff here. So. These are the skeleton warriors, we've fought them a few times. Uh, yokai taken the form of armoured skeletons, warriors who are unprepared for their death uh, when it comes, or who take their own lives, return, of these, return as these angry spirits to roam the battlefield and assault the living indiscriminately. So, change appearance, okay. Ah, alright, so yeah, the skeleton warrior, this is the big one. And there's the small one. We can also change information. So it, can, it actually tells us a few things. So we've defeated 54 of them. Um, we haven't died to any of them. We've dealt just over 100,000 damage to them. We've only received 4,419 and we've obtained 26,000 Emrita. Uh, below there is the weakness um, and their resistances. So they're pretty resistant against... Pretty resistant, resistant against... Wow, I can't talk. They are pretty resistant against poison. Okay, cool. That's done. And also, uh, hang on a sec, where was the button? There. So when you defeat 100 Skeleton Warriors, you unlock a little bit more information. I love that feature. It's so rewarding. It really makes like looking at this interesting. Uh, okay, this is a Dweller. Dwellers are humans turned into yokai by the foul miasma in the depths of a mine. These actually look like the enemies in um, Demon's Souls. Yeah, that's right, Demon's Souls. Um, they were in like the mine areas as well. Probably based off the same thing now that I think about it. <laughs> they were objects of loathing and terror for miners, and legends about them circulate wherever a mine with a long history is found. Their grotesquely altered forms inspire instinctive revulsion in all who can bear to view them. Whoever they got to write these is <laughs> really, really good with English. But it might also be the, uh, like, the, just the translation, or the, what is it, localization guys are really good. So these are the Oni, Oni B. Um, I think I was struggling to remember their names before, but yeah, Oni B. They're really good with these, uh, with these illustrations here. Oni B resemble floating balls of fire. They are formed when the elemental power of fire, water, wind, lightning, or earth coalesces around the will of a dead soul. They must be they must be distinguished 
Distinguished? They must be distinguished from the souls known as Hitodharma. Oh, I see, like, I guess, like, Hitodharma is something and they're something else, is that what they're saying? They must be distinguished from the souls known as Hitodharma that burn on once their bodies are no more. Onibi are yokai, plain and simple. I don't know if they mean distinguished or ex extinguished. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure on that one, but anyway, that's what they look like. We're going to be fighting them a lot. This is the Biwa Boku Boku, pronounced Biwa Boku Boku. <laughs> a yokai taking the form of a monk, playing a Biwa lute. The Biwa is the yokai itself. The monk is simply a reflection of Hoichi, the Biwa player whose unwise dealings with restless Heike, Heike warrior spirits cost him both his ears. Lures intruders deeper into places of evil with its eerie melodies. Oh, what the hell? His loot has arms. That's crazy. I never actually really looked at this guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go through this these for the rest of the uh, episode because um, I don't think I have enough time to proceed through the next mission. So yeah, at the moment I'm going to go through these. But these are interesting, so stick around. Sentries. Um, sentries are statues that move through the power of a spirit stone. Carved in the form of ancient warriors, they are placed out of sight at tombs, sacred domains, and the likes as guards. When they detect an intruder, they immediately attack, and they certainly do. These guys, ooh, they pack a punch, but their, their weakness is magic. Um, water, specifically. Water is very powerful against them. Against them. Anything else here on the... No, okay. Uh, now we're up to the Kappa. Let's read the Kappa. Kappa a diminutive yokai with green skin, a dish-like depression on their heads, and a turtle-like shell on their back. They generally lurk underwater, but they often emerge onto dry land as well. In the water, Kappa are faster than fish, and they are known to commit evils like seizing children playing in rivers by the leg and dragging them under, or stealing the Shiri Kodama soul from people's behinds and leaving them listless shells of their former self. Now, that part there from people's behinds, if you get attacked um, by the Kappa enough, he will actually perform that move to you, and William will kind of react in a sort of appropriate way. He'll be like, ah, what the hell? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's a really strange, um, strange attack. Uh, and then I think the second part there is unlocked once you beat three Kappas or something like that. I don't know if that's there ne necessarily, but let's read it. Cowardly by nature, Kappa flee underwater at the first sign of danger. They are rumored to have a taste for cucumbers and to wither and die if the water in the dish on their head dries up. Other legends say that a treasure lies concealed inside their shells and can be claimed if the Kappa is slain before it can escape. Okay, so that's just giving us a little bit of a hint there. It's not weak to anything, it's not resistant to get it against anything. We have defeated three of them, so there is a chance that that second paragraph is only there after you defeat three of them, but yeah. Kappa, they're just like, um, they're essentially the crystal lizards of this, this game, um, like in Dark Souls. So, but sometimes, like, I have a feeling killing certain Kappas at certain levels can give you real good stuff, because they have a much higher increased chance to drop good stuff. Yoki. A human turned fiend by the power of Amrita, also known as a form of Oni, a muscular horned humanoid dwelling in the mountains. The Shuten Doji is the most famous. So too are the Oni who are fought by Momotaro, the Peach Boy. Every February in Japan, a ritual called Setsubun is undertaken where citizens scatter beans to drive away Oni and pray for good health. Oni is basically, I think, a term for like the demons and the devils kind of thing it's it's all kind of a very um almost like a collective noun essentially for for these these de demons and beasts um japanese folklore has all that kind of stuff not weak to anything not resistance again resistant again any oh my god i can't talk resistant against anything uh here's the other one that we fought earlier anymore yeah there's the this is the weaker one so this one's like sort of mid at the midpoint. He's pretty strong, but he has two horns and you can knock him down and stab him a couple times. This one here is just really good at moving and, and he can he can hurt you quite a lot. Such great design on this stuff. It reminds me of like um, Soul Calibur or something, I don't know. <laughs> it kind of looks like Soul Calibur stuff. Stuff. I remember Astaroth from Soul Calibur. That guy used to scare me as a kid because I was like, oh, he's like heart is like out of his chest or something. It's weird and I know that's a medical condition as well, so I don't know. I think I was like 
<laughs> I was uh, inappropriately scared of them or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> um, I was a kid. What can I say? I didn't know about it. Um, and these ones are real easy. So you just knock off one horn and generally they'll, they'll go down. Uh, One-eyed imp. One-eyed imps are yokai who look like a little boy with a la single large eye in the center of their face. Because of their unassuming size, they do not get in the way much. And some are, excuse me. Huh. And some are even quite friendly. However, those who underestimate them as weak yokai with only the power to frighten might get a nasty shock if they venture too close. I think this yokai, I think you're able to communicate with him um, in uh, with, uh, whatchamacallit, with gestures. So hopefully we can defeat 40 of them and see if we can find out if that's the case. Because I know there's a trophy for communicating with yokai um, in certain, uh, through gestures. The one-eyed only Oni. Um, a gigantic Oni with a single eye in the center of its face. Oni with two eyes were originally human, or at least born of ugly human passions in some way. One-eyed Oni, however, are said to be the wild, bestial side of mountain gods and local spirits personified. Not weak against anything. Wheel Monk. A yokai like a wheel with a gigantic face attached to it. The wheel is big enough to be used uh, on an ox cart, and while the face has a certain degree of freedom to leap from it, they remain tied to it by their hair. Okay, that's cool. Uh, wreathed in flames and scowling hideously as they roll around, the face resembles a visitor from another world and has long struck terror into the hearts of those who witness them. Onryoki pronounced Onryoki, a huge red oni born from a pack of angry ghosts. Half of its face is contorted in anger, the other oops, twisted with, a, with grudge. The faces of countless vengeful ghosts appear across its body, letting out shrieks that send terror down the spines of all within earshot. So we can reveal more information about him if we de defeat him more times. Uh, we m we're not going to do it this episode, but we're definitely going to beat him without taking a hit before we move on. So that, that'll be coming. Uh, now we're up to Hino Enma. Pronounced Hino Enma. Um, a yokai taking the form of a young woman. Deceives humans and drinks their blood. The name Hino Enma literally means flying bad luck. And she is believed to cause all manner of troubles and misfortunes. She is believed to have been born from the angry soul of an innocent woman senselessly struck down in the heat of a battle. Sounds about right. So she's weak to lightning, which is why I use lightning against her, but she's resistant against wind and paralysis. So yeah, oh, I died twice to her. That sucks. Technically I died twice to her, um, her uh, twilight form, but still counts. Um, pronounced new A. New, new A? Yeah, new A. Oh, okay. It's not new. It's new A. A yokai chimera, its fanged mouth terrorizes its prey with an eerie cry. Nue is wreathed in dark smoke, making it difficult to discern its overall appearance. Its ability to summon thunder has earned it the alternate name of R Raiju, the Thunder Beast. Such a cool looking um, boss. Really, really cool design, I reckon. Uh, it's weak against water, it's resistant to lightning and poison. Makes sense. Don't know exactly why it's weak to water. Um, if it was like water, it would make sense that it would be weak to thunder, but I'm not sure about that way around. Okay, anything else we can quickly go over? I guess we'll quickly go over the Guardian Spirits and then we'll call it an episode. Cut tall. Fire Elemental. Legend has it that a she-wolf hit by a shooting star in the first month of her pregnancy will give birth to a cut tall. These fire-eating hounds are said to cause the forest fires sparked by lightning strikes. Harbingers of house fires and other misfortunes, Kato are venerated as servants of the god of fire. Cool. Um, Fuse Ushi is a bull spirit that protects believers from misfortune. Bovines have long served alongside humans, providing their strength in agriculture and other ways to support our lives. For this reason, some civilizations actually ban the consumption of their meat and venerate them. Oh man, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm not bored by this, it's just, it's a lot of reading and I, I want to I play, but i got to get through this. And venerate them as a sign of thanks. Pat its stomach as a sign of respect, and the fuzu she will absorb negative key. Huh, interesting. The great Kuroda Nagamasa, <laughs> the great, um, decorated his helm with a bull ornament in the hope of becoming a fierce warrior with a heart as gentle as the fuzu she. 
uh, pronounced Mizuchi. Mizuchi. This dragon serves as, as guardian spirit of those who harbor great ambitions. Though they normally reside in the abysses of deep rivers, it is believed that upon their death, they ascend to the heavens and transform into celestial dragons. True or not, this belief was so widespread in the Warring States period that many aspiring warriors fervently venerated the Mi Mizuchi. And finally, oh no, there's two, sorry. Riken, pronounced Riken. Written with the characters for Thunder and Dog, these uh, holy hounds are venerated as protector spirits. Many of the Komainu statues placed in shrines throughout Japan resemble them. When those who would defile holy ground, holy ground were struck by divine light, down with divine lightning, it is the Riken who loosed the bolts. Legend has it that when Tachibana Ginchio's father, Tachibana Dosetsu, succeeded at cutting lightning, the defeated lightning spirit transformed into a Riken and has served as the Tachibana family's guardian spirit ever since. It is said that every Riken has a mate and their true power manifests when they are paired. And Shoshe, uh, aquatic guardian spirit that resembles the marrow of Celtic legend. With feathered wings and a fish's tail, Sirsha, Sirsha can warn of uh, impending danger and sense Amrita. She has been with William since he was a child and is both friend and family to him now. Or perhaps something more. Her name is pronounced Sirsha and means freedom in Gaelic. Alright, awesome. So we got through a bit, fair bit of that. Um, we won't have to go through too much of that later anyway. Like we'll go through the second paragraphs of the enemies. I think those are the most interesting ones. Um, and a few more guardian spirits, but we've still got like a ways to go. So it's going to be mainly combat from now on. Uh, but I want to thank you all for watching episode 16 of Less Platinum Neo. My name is Ultima456. You're the Ultimates. And I'll see you next time.